Hello and welcome. Most of us uh, in India have been under some form of lockdown or the other for more than 40 days now. It appears, again, in some parts of uh, India that the lockdown might extend for another two weeks or even more. And even if there is a lifting, it will be phased. There are two questions and challenges that we are uh, uh, faced with as we emerge from it. One is the economic and how the economy is going to come back. The second and perhaps something that's not discussed so often is that of mental health. How are we as a populace uh, or as people ready for this new world? What are What is happening to us right now uh, as we uh, sit at home, as we engage with our families? Uh, are there concerns, or are there issues that we should have been grappling with or are grappling with that perhaps will have an uh, impact uh, uh, in down, uh, downstream as we emerge in back into the real world? So uh, this is the, the, the issue of mental health is important at all times, but usually not uh, does not get the attention it deserves. But uh, this is perhaps one of those occasions which has uh, made it important for us to focus on, to acknowledge, to discuss and to find solutions. So, so let's understand what uh, we are facing with and are likely to face as we get back to work. Uh, I'm joined uh, for this discussion by Dr. Shekhar Saxena, Professor of Practice of Global Mental Health at Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health and previously Director of our Mental Health and Substance Abuse at the World Health Organization. I'm also joined by Dr. Amit Malik, uh, formerly a, a MBBS from India, specialist training in psychiatry in the United Kingdom. Uh, spent 13 years in the national health system and also worked with the or was part of the Royal College of Psychiatry and the European Board of Psychiatry. He also was an MBA from the London Business School. And finally, uh, Neha uh, uh, Kirpal, who founded uh, the India's first international art fair, sold it to MCH Basel, but more importantly, has been actively and passionately involved with the uh, world of public health and now as the co-founder of Inner Hour, a digital platform that attempts to ease access and personalized self-help tools to support your mental health journey. Thank you all for joining me. So, uh, Dr. Sha uh, uh, Saxena, let me begin with you. So, as we go back into the world, uh, into the real world, uh, things would have changed and are changing right now. Uh, what are they and what are the mental health challenges that uh, we should be aware of, acknowledge and then uh, look for solutions? Uh, thank you, Govind, for picking up mental health as, as an issue, which is important for uh, for all of us at all times, but more especially important during disasters like COVID. And uh, we know that uh, one in four of us is uh, impacted by mental health in one way or other throughout our life. And during these times, the prevalence of mental health problems as well as disorders increases markedly. We know from international studies, also from figures in India, that the likelihood that uh, many of us will have mental health problems and some of us will have disorder is very high. And we need to take special attention to our mental health like during times like these, for ourselves, also for our family and our colleagues. As the, the lockdown lifts, uh, we need to be especially aware that we should not have a release phenomenon. That means we have been waiting for a long time now to do certain things and suddenly, if the lockdown lifts, we go all out and do it, ignoring all the precautions that we still need to take. So the first thing is safety. Are we following the reasonable precautions for public health that has been that have been advised, but not ordered maybe? So even if the lockdown is lifted, are we taking good care of ourselves based on good advice? And the second is, are we able to look after our mental health in the best possible manner with the impact of all of these restrictions, what measures have we taken, what measures are, are further needed and are we seeking the help that many of us need because we always deny the, that we could have a mental health problem. We should stop doing that and seek the kind of help that we all need and in these times all of us need that kind of thing. Right. Uh, Dr. Malik, let me come to you. So loneliness and isolation are intrinsic to this period, but it can transition to depression and could need assistance or help. How do we know that? How can I know that? Or how can how can I know about people in my family? And uh, what should be the next step? Hi, thanks, Govind. Thank, thanks for the question as well. The I mean, the easiest thing uh, our, our team and therapists always ask people to look out for is any change in functioning. And so what is your baseline level of functioning, whether it's uh, your interaction with your family, whether it's your ability to do work or housework or, 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 or professional work, what's your baseline level of functioning? And has that shifted consistently for the last few days, uh, maybe up to a couple of weeks? Now that functioning has shifted, 
then you need to start looking at other things are you more irritable are you uh, how is your interaction with, uh, with 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 family members how's your sleep how's your appetite patterns uh, appetite patterns and if these things are affected then you really need to start thinking that do i need more help than i can provide for myself right now and so that's the that's the so i, so I would really look at and focus on the level of functioning compared to your baseline as the first indicator in some Okay, Neha, uh, uh, your app has been seeing a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, people logging in and uh, you know or, and and obviously saying that uh, or or outlining their problems and issues. Can can you take us through what the numbers look like and how has it fundamentally changed since uh, we went into lockdown? I mean, it's been an incredible journey just to look at the way people are engaging uh, with early access and intervention tools. So. um you know when amit moved back in 3 uh, years ago he had started in rr and over the last few years we've seen about uh, 7 lakh people take self assessments from 100 cities across the country um and uh, we've seen uh, over 600000 downloads uh, not just from india but from around the world and people are really you know just between march and april we've seen special interaction times double uh in addition to that we you know at inner r we have a network uh, uh, of about 150 therapists there doing counseling in about eight local languages and we're seeing again a big 60 to 65% jump in that so overall my reflection as as i joined amit last year uh, is really the the large unmet need that already existed before covid Uh, and how few uh, support platforms and services there are we recognize that india has very few specialists and therefore digital therapies and remote access is very important uh, to try and add more efficiency and reach, reach more people uh, but it's also about reaching them earlier in their life course so you know post covid now we're seeing higher financial anxiety health anxieties caregiver anxieties people relapsing with existing conditions people tipping over there's a lot of grief um, relationship conflicts domestic abuse i mean you know this is just the beginning of what is going to be yet another big surge in this pandemic that is already got a third of the world's depressed addicts and suicidal cases so india really needs to step up and try and address mental health head on for not just for the immediate but also the mid term and the long term Right. So you mentioned financial and health as as two uh, instances. So tell us, uh, are you, uh, if as you see more of these, what is the response that therapists typically provide, and also this to act so that this acts as some kind of uh, maybe trigger for those who have not taken help to go ahead and take it. So this is very important, and we've seen a lot of organizations, not just uh, government organizations and state agencies, but also private uh, companies coming forward to support mental health of organizations. We at NRR started a pro bono program for healthcare organizations, frontline agencies, NGOs, and every day we're onboarding thousands of employees across the country from different sectors uh, who are coming and utilizing some of the services that are available pro bono in the period of the lockdown. So uh, there is a huge amount of uptake and recognition. because today mental health is mainstreamed as everybody's problem and you know as shekhar said mental illness is the one for problem but mental health is everybody's need to preserve and safeguard in challenging periods like this right and uh, uh, dr saxena there are three constituencies that we could perhaps address governments uh, organizations and employers and uh, employees or individuals uh, may be employed or not employed but let's talk about uh, governments and organizations and uh, maybe we could add institutions to that to that like education institutions what do these three constituencies need to do and uh, uh, need to do or need to be working on today so as to be better prepared uh, for the people that they will uh you know finally bring back into their work for workforces or or their workplaces i think uh, all of us need to be active and pay more attention to mental health and be very prepared for the surge of mental health issues that are already there and are going to become even more impactful from the government side the investment in mental health has been extremely poor uh, as a as a staff of who i collected information from all countries about the preparedness for mental health that they have as a part of the healthcare system and india fares very poorly indeed in terms of financial investment as well as the trained personnel that are there as a part of the government mechanisms to provide mental health care we have a mental health policy we have a mental health law which are actually very progressive and nice it's the implementation of that which is the problem so as a government whether it's a central government or a state government and even down to the district and municipality levels we need to really invest in mental health by putting more money and also by training more people to provide the kind of help that is needed 
from organizations and businesses and employers we need to be much more perceptive about the mental health strain that the organization and employees are facing much more than earlier times and we need to provide an environment where we can be supportive supportive with practical help like the payment of wages some maybe advances but also adaptation to the work because people are facing a lot of problems and employees can be much more perceptive there are very some some very good examples but many more could be more perceptive about how the employees can perform better but also look after their mental health needs in a better way and as civil society we need to provide help to others who need it at this point of time because there are many vulnerable groups including the very poor people the migrants and many other groups of people who need help and they cannot help themselves because they don't have the resources and civil society has the responsibility to provide that kind of thing immediately and to continue with that because this is not a matter of weeks it's a matter of months and years so we need to gear ourselves for providing that kind of sustainable help right so dr malik uh, you know uh, it is going to be weeks and uh, months or months and maybe years before vaccines are found and some longer term solutions emerge but in the meanwhile our lives would have changed our approach to the way we live lives would have changed and are changing dramatically as we speak so so what's the uh, how do we approach this you know work from home for instance is uh, is going to become a part of blended uh, life uh, uh, the way maybe organizations have to assess will have to change the may maybe we interact with organizations and our expectations from those have to change and all of this is is to do with our sanity in a manner of speaking so how how are you uh, you know advocating the path and way forward so the first thing i would say is that i hope is not years before the vaccine comes out uh, i i i i i i my part of a psychiatrist job is to provide optimism and hope and i'm more optimistic and hopeful that it will be much sooner than that when we get we get a vaccine right uh, but but coming to your question uh, the first is that this is a new normal now right so so accepting change and 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 living with the change and developing a new routine right routines give us structure and control and can really help with adjustment so actually whatever the new blended normal looks like developing a routine around that right find and it's important right now that people find things to look forward to post lock, lockdown ending and use their excitement to feel motivated but at the same time just as shaker said still maintain the hygiene practices and safety standards once the lockdown the, the release is very dangerous right as as a society and a, and a community the release for us suddenly people doing lots of things that they shouldn't be doing and not following guidance is very very dangerous right the, the other thing is developing a flexible mindset right things are going to be uncertain over the next few months maybe over the, at least the next 12 to 18 months as well so developing a flexible mindset and not expecting things to be normal right mm-hmm. because we that will lead to disappointment continuously and that will affect your mental health so just if and then finally communicating right communicating with people at work people at home as you develop in your routines um, managing expectations externally and internally is very very critical and finally maintaining a level of energy that's that's high right maintaining high levels of energy is important so which which can only be done if you take regular breaks uh, and, and and you know and, and you have spurts of energy so just a few things developing a new normal routine right developing a flexible mindset communicating still maintaining hygiene practices and safety standards and finally maintaining your energy levels all of these are very very important in what going to be a new normal for the next 12 to 18 months i think right neha and uh, and how would you approach uh, i mean use that i mean if i would extrapolate that same question to parents parents of children parents who are working parents who are going to be work from home are already work from home and uh, learning and could be teachers as well as uh, we we discussed in an earlier discussion uh, how how does this whole in almost nightmarish uh you know uh world come together yeah well there's many different ways in which each of these constituents i suppose are going about interpreting what's going on what that new normal might look like and what their role is for themselves their families and their spheres of influence but i think fundamentally it's it, there the experience is not so dissimilar so fundamentally the idea of losing control the idea of um uh, things sort of not going as per a certain predictable format the conditioning and the habits that we have formed that we are used to and the ambiguity uh, that lies uh, and and the lack of clarity around you know what how things will pan out so i think it really what it does is two things it it on the one hand if 
triggers our insecurities. It triggers anxieties that make people either feel worse if they had existing conditions, whether it was addictive conditions, depressive conditions, any kind of other healthcare conditions as well. Uh, they typically tend to have a, a, a worse off uh, phase. But what it also does is it gives us the opportunity to reset and reboot uh, some of, and maybe you know, undo some of the patterns that we had set for ourselves and, and try and establish a new um, sort of recognition of that identity uh, in the new reality that, that might emerge. So I think those variables keeping in mind, it's more the attitude or the approach where you know, uh, helplessness does not mean hopelessness. Um, and yes, there are fears, yes, there are anxieties, we all have them. Uh, the good news is everybody is in the same boat and no one really knows uh, the when and how of it. And there's some reassurance in that because it kind of it's very leveling. And, uh, it, you know, you tend to find safety in saying, you know, OK, then then we'll figure it out together. Uh, so I think there is some hope there and, and we should draw from that. Uh, we're running to the end of our discussion. Uh, let me uh, ask you one question uh, and let me begin with you, Dr. Saxena. So the one uh, piece of recommendation, I mean, some of them have already emerged, but the one solid piece of recommendation from you for those who are uh, going to get back to work or try and get back to work in whichever way, and obviously I mean in the physical way, what should they be doing, not doing, what are the do's and don'ts, and uh, how should they be approaching uh, life and livelihood? Well, during these times where we are talking about a new normal for the environment, we need to think about how can we rediscover ourselves, our values, our ways of working, the ways in which we derive pleasure, the ways which were maladaptive to begin with. Can we change that? So we can rediscover our, ourselves as the environment is changing so massively. And the practical implications of that is can we adjust better to the circumstances that are around us, but also to our own needs and our own desires and our own values? So that's a time that as we open up, we can have a new self. And that is, is very important for all of us. OK, Dr. Malik. I, I, I mentioned it earlier, but, but developing a new routine for a new normal, right? Uh, and not just falling into it by accident. So recognizing how new normals change, whether it's at home, whether it's work or a combination of the two, and developing a routine around that that gives us structure and control can really help with adjusting to the new normal. And then, then routine can change, but start not just falling into it by accident is very, very critical from my perspective. And the second thing that's very important is to communicate more. Right, right now, and, and as you go out, it's important to communicate with each other more, whether it's at work or is it at home. It's important to communicate more because everybody's normal is changing. So expectations might change, uh, ability to deliver might change. So it's, it's very, very important to communicate that to each other. Okay, uh, Neha, last word. I think uh, these are times that have made us, you know, while there's physical distancing, they've made us realize the importance of social connectedness. And that applies at work, in relationships and all of that. We recognize that our biggest joys come from that and also our biggest uh, problems sometimes. Uh, and so it's really, you know, as employees go back into offices and children go back into schools and so do teachers and policymakers uh, take their chair again. It's really about recognizing that mental health is a developmental issue. It's a civic issue. It's a human rights issue. It affects every aspect of society. It is certainly not a silo of a healthcare issue. And therefore, we must be conscious of it all the time in every aspect of our life. Uh, and in every kind of relationship and um, and physical space that we inhabit uh, in the course of our lives. Wonderful. Thank you so much all for joining me. This is indeed a new normal and the new normal is what we should be prepared for. We should accept it. We should communicate it and uh, we should, of course, uh, be uh, willing to uh, work, adapt and uh, adapt all of those around us and with them uh, as uh, we make try and make this uh, a constructive phase and uh, emerge as more constructive people and a new in this new world. Thank you all for joining me and uh, see you soon. Thank you.